The Washington Commanders have their competitor for Sam Howell's claim to the starting quarterback job, and Jacoby Brissett isn't someone you should sleep on entering this battle. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome to Commanders fans of the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. I am David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Commanders for Commander Country, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. You can find me there or here or on Twitter as well at Harrison. 82. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the National Football League. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Luke Braun of the Locked On Vikings podcast is here with us today to inform us on Cam Dantzler, the new cornerback claimed off of waivers by the Washington Commanders. And we're going to do a rundown of Washington Commanders transactions, a very, very busy week, very busy team here in the early parts of the new regulars the new league year and of course uh, on earlier in the week during legal tampering but first we're going to start with the biggest news of the day and that is the commanders agreeing to a contract with now former Cleveland Browns quarterback Jacoby Brissett that first reported by Diana Rossini and then confirmed by uh, just about everybody that you know Uh, assuming right now that it's a one-year deal at the time of the recording we don't have all those contract details but I'm assuming it's a one maybe a two-year deal uh, I suppose could be possible but we're going to operate off of basically a short deal for uh, the veteran quarterback. Immediately, the assumption is, and and some of the reports coming from inside the organization are, that Jacoby Brissett is coming in to compete. So we've been been talking all offseason about Ron Rivera's words and, and Martin Mayhew and how they want Sam Howell to have the opportunity to come in and compete for the starting job. And going as far as to say is that they're going to basically open their offseason program and training camp and all that stuff with Sam being the number one quarterback. But that they want a competition. They want a veteran guy uh, to come in here and push him. Uh, I rallied for Taylor Heineke to be that guy to come in and kind of get that really uh, even and, and fair opportunity to earn the starting job. That idea kind of took off a little bit. Again, during Super Bowl week, Taylor made a few comments that almost kind of made it seem like a deal uh, was just waiting to be inked with the Washington Commanders. Eventually, he ends up going to uh, the Atlanta Falcons, and then here we have the Washington Commanders turning directions to Jacoby Brissett, an older veteran, but still a veteran uh, quarterback. As far as the competition here is concerned, Jacoby Brissett uh, is a guy that I identified here on the show that we talked about because he's got some ability. He's he's never really been the guy for an NFL franchise, right? But there was a reason that he was drafted in the third round uh, going all the way back to when he came into the NFL. And there's a reason that some of these guys stick around. He's not a world beater. He's not a Patrick Mahomes, obviously, or an Andrew Luck or a Tom Brady or anything like that, but he's got enough arm talent to make the throws. We know that Sam Howell has the arm talent to make the throws. Uh, The highlight of him dropping a dime to Terry McLaurin against Dallas Cowboys has been making its rounds on social media recently for good reason. So both have the arm talent. I would say that Sam Howell probably has the edge on the arm talent, but they both have enough arm talent uh, to make all the throws that the Washington Commanders are going to ask their quarterbacks to make. They also both have enough mobility to move around when they're needed. Again, I would say the Sam Howell, more agile, probably a little bit quicker, but he's also a little bit younger. You know, that's that's not to take away from, from uh, Jacoby, but Jacoby Brissett has shown, and if you, if you go and, and you go back and watch some Browns clips and go back and watch some Dolphins clips, you can see that he's got the ability to move around when he needs to uh, and when he decides to. So again, I give Howell the, the advantage there, give Howell the advantage on the arm strength, but when it comes down to this competition, I give Jacoby Brissett the advantage on the mental side of things. And that's not to say that Sam Howell's football IQ is is bad or anything, but the bottom line is this is a young quarterback coming into his second season in the National Football League. He's only got one game uh, of live reps as as far as regular season action, some preseason action, right? And then he's got his practice reps, and those are all valuable. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to take away from those, but Jacoby Brissett's got a lot more experience He's faced a lot more defenses in real time, regular season defenses, leading a team, going out there. And he's learned a lot of playbooks during his career. Part of those travels and part of the reason that he continues to travel is because of his ability to learn, execute, and communicate playbooks. You go back to Josh McCown and his career, and a lot of people make jokes about how many players or how many teams he played for during the course of his career. Ryan Fitzpatrick is another one where people kind of joke around about how many teams he played for. The reason those guys played for so many teams 
wasn't necessarily elite arm talent, wasn't elite athleticism. It was their ability to learn, absorb, communicate, and execute various offenses, very, very different offenses, different languages, and learn them very quickly, retain them, and be able to execute them. For Jacoby Brissett, I think that's where his advantage is because both Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett and uh, Jake Fromm, for that matter, the other quarterback on the roster, are all learning Eric Bieniemy's offense for the very first time. And you might say, well, you just watch Kansas City Chiefs tape and kind of look at that and say, well, that's what it is. But Eric Bieniemy is a running back at heart, and I think you're going to see more running in Eric Bieniemy's version than you did in the Kansas City version. So, again, Jacoby Brissett, I think that's where his advantage comes in in this competition. And if he ends up winning this thing, it's going to be because he was able to absorb, adapt, and execute the offense faster uh, than Sam Howell. But again, don't give, don't, don't count Sam Howell out of it either. But the point of this conversation is, is don't expect Jacoby Brissett to just come in, just boom, automatically be a mentor and a veteran to Sam Howell. However, his past history, he's a solid backup. He's a guy that can come in and play behind a younger quarterback or play behind another quarterback and be that supportive person, be that communicative teammate uh, and, and in this role because of uh, Sam Howell's youth and inexperience in the National Football League, become uh, a sort of a mentor. So I think they really nailed the pick with this one. This is why he was one of my options here. If they wanted to go with the older veteran, Jacoby Brissett was the guy that I identified for all of these exact reasons. And you see some of the quotes about him, about the organization being fired up and expecting him to come in and compete, but also be able to be a good teammate uh, as the backup if that's what it comes down to. Those are all the reasons that we identified him here on Locks on Commanders. 2016 third round draft pick of the New England Patriots. Uh, again, back then, started two games as a rookie, traded to the Colts in 2017, the following season, uh, started 15 games for the Indianapolis Colts, a 4 and 11 record, 3,000 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Then he started 15 games uh, for the Colts again in 2019, going seven and eight that time, 2,900 yards, 18 touchdowns, and six interceptions. Uh, 2021, as a free agent, went over to the Miami Dolphins, went two and three and five starts with five touchdowns, four interceptions. And then there's just this last season uh, playing for Cleveland, started 11 games while Deshaun Watson served out his suspension. And the uh, Cleveland Browns went four and seven in that stretch with 2,600 yards, 12 touchdowns, and six interceptions in a career. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, 61% completion rate, which isn't great. Uh, 48 touchdowns to 23 interceptions. That part uh, is, is better. That ball security ratio is, is much better. But he's also had six or more fumbles in every season that he started five or more games. That is a little bit concerning. I would like to see him kind of clean those things up uh, as well. Shout out real quick to Teresh from Tegna, our friend over there, uh, who pointed out that Eric Bieniemy and Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski have a longtime relationship. Uh, that kind of gives you the commanders-Browns connection between uh, Jacoby Brissett and, and maybe there are some, some conversations uh, had there another interesting point uh, at least interesting to me not a not a huge connection right but free agent tight end Mike Gusecki is someone that a lot of commanders fans uh, have kind of expressed interest in we've talked about him here uh, on this show as well his best season overall uh, came in in 2021 where set was the quarterback for uh, five of those games again the, the record wasn't great but Gusecki's only double digit reception game that season came when Jacoby Brissett was in there so just some interesting things on the quarterback again, uh, coming in to compete. I'm, I'm sure that's going to be the message uh, all year long. You know, if he has a press conference and, and all that, he'll say the same thing. Then during training camp uh, as well. So while the commander's quarterback room just got a little bit more experience in it, the linebacker room lost a leader when Cole Holcomb agreed to terms with the Pittsburgh Steelers. More on that commander's news and more coming up on this episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But first, today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by FanDuel. The final stretch of the NBA regular season is here, and now is the perfect time for you to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers, you get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 as bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanBook, the FanDuel sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use, and then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to threes drained, whatever you want. Currently, Washington Commanders are plus 6,000 odds to win the Super Bowl. That's worse than the NFC East. Or if you're looking for more current action, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with same-game parlays. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. <laughs> Thanks 
Big and Lock Talk Mirrors podcast. Your first listen, your first view every single day. We just talked about Jacoby Brissett and his uh, pending arrival to the Washington Commanders franchise as a veteran leader in the quarterback room, but also competition for the starting job uh, for second-year quarterback Sam Howell. Now we're going to catch up on some other transaction news has been firing away quick and, and crazy, and the Washington Commanders have been a busy, busy organization as usual, but busy for a lot of the right reasons. Although one bit of bad news that did come uh, down Wednesday morning was linebacker Cole Holcomb heading to the Pittsburgh Steelers on a three-year deal. That deal is pending a physical, which makes sense because Cole Holcomb, uh, as you would likely remember, lost 10 games last year to a foot injury. Initially thought to be kind of a ho-hum injury, you know, a couple games, maybe three. Uh, eventually, uh, he ends up on IR and just things kind of just seem to get worse. Uh, from there, and there was some concern about whether or not he would be able to return to the Washington Commanders this season. Obviously, he is now not returning to the Commanders. He said he will be turning his career towards Pittsburgh, trying to continue it uh, there. Nine tackle performance in the win over the Green Bay Packers will be Holcomb's final performance uh, as a member of the Washington Commanders. Selected in the fifth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, uh, up to now spent his entire four-year NFL career in Washington Played 50 out of a possible 66 games, 388 tackles, 15 of those for a loss of four and a half sacks, primarily obviously a coverage uh, linebacker look. He went from a fifth-round draft pick to setting the defense in 2021 and then a team captain in 2022. If, uh, if, if there are more people who have accomplished more in a four-year time period in their professional careers, uh, there's not that many more that have done more than what uh, Cole Holcomb did. So good luck to Cole earlier this week. Uh, the commanders agreed to terms with former Seattle Seahawks linebacker Cody Barton uh, in a move that that we said here on the show probably signaled the end of Cole Holcomb's time with the Washington Commanders. We had Corbin Smith of Locked On Seahawks on the show on the program earlier this week to tell us about Cody Barton. Um, look, if you're if you're out there on Twitter, you're seeing a lot of Seahawks fans kind of saying the good riddance thing to Cody Barton. But Corbin Smith told us, and I've seen some other Seahawks media members as well state that Cody Barton gets way too much flack for what was happening on that defense. Um, so again, you know, take, take everything with a grain of salt as you will. If you missed that interview with, uh, with Corbin, make sure you go check that out as well. Also the Washington commanders released running back JD McKissick. And this is something that again, we've talked about during the off season, uh, the, the injury concerns with JD and then having them kind of flare back up. There was, there was just questions about whether or not, he would be able to return. Honestly, I've got some questions about whether or not he's going to be able to play football anymore. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, it's unfortunate for a guy who obviously had a lot of talent. And when he was available for the Washington commanders displayed that talent uh, very regularly teaming up there with Antonio Gibson and, you know, the expectation with Brian Robinson coming in and teaming up with Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick would have looked really good. But unfortunately, sometimes, you know, as, as I like to say, the, the body doesn't agree with our career decisions. So hopefully JD McKissick, Able to continue his football life, but unfortunately will not be with the Washington Commander. Turning to uh, so a bit of good news, safety and all-pro special teamer uh, Jeremy Reeves received his restricted agent tender from the Washington Commanders. That tender pays $2.63 million this year. And while he can negotiate with other teams during the free agent period, Washington will get the opportunity to match any offer sheet uh, that he might agree to. However, Ben Standing of the Athletic, uh, writing on Wednesday, I believe that Reeves and the team are in the progress, are in the process rather, of negotiating a longer term deal, trying to keep Jeremy Reeves in Washington for more than the one year that the uh, restricted free agent tender allows them to. So, good news on bringing Jeremy Reeves back. Uh, a good, a good presence in the locker room. Obviously, one of the best, if not the best, special teams player in the National Football League. Commanders linebacker John Bostic, uh, I pointed out several times on Locked On Gators podcast during the season, said unprompted Jeremy Reeves was absolutely the best special teams player in the national football league. And I'm sure you remember uh, if you saw the video of when Ron Rivera got to reveal to Jeremy that he was going to be a pro bowler, uh, the touch, the touching emotions uh, in that video. And then later on also being an all pro, just great to see Jeremy Reeves finally get the recognition that his hard work uh, and honestly his personality. He's, 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 he's a lot of fun uh, in the locker room, had some interesting conversations. Actually, he might be, he might be happy to learn that I've got a new cell phone case and it does not have a cover on the screen, but that's a, it's a story for a different day. Um, back to a little bit of bad news. John Matsko, the offensive line coach fired uh, by Washington. John Kime of ESPN reporting uh, that he was told it was due to quote unquote philosophical differences. Uh, and essentially what that boils down to is Eric B coming in. He's going to run his offense, stall his offense. 
and he needs his coaches to be able to communicate his message uh, and deliver that. So now the, the question turns to who's going to be the next offensive line uh, coach here for the Washington Commanders. Assistant offensive line coach Travell Wharton is obviously a name to watch. The, the natural progression uh, in that career field is, is very simple to point to. Got some more experience this this just this offseason at the Reese's Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama, coaching the offensive linemen for the American roster, uh, if memory serves correctly. So he could be one. Also, tight end coach Juan Castillo has offensive line history uh, in his coaching background. He's done a lot of offensive line work. Saw him during the season doing a lot of blocking uh, training with the tight ends and, and doing all those things, trying to improve those guys and their blocking skills. So Juan Castillo, obviously, uh, or another a potential candidate to to step into that offensive line coach, or uh, you know Eric Bieniemy and Ron Rivera and the, and the team could choose to go uh, a different direction. This time of year, for the most part, most of those coaching changes have kind of uh, exhausted themselves. So you kind of almost expect an internal hire or elevation, but something to keep on keep an eye on uh, for sure as Eric Bieniemy continues to construct his offense uh, and construct it the way that he needs it to be constructed. On Wednesday, the Commanders also agreed to a new deal. With center Tyler Larson, uh, adding Larson to the addition of Nick Gates. Nick Gates, hard for me to say last names today, guys. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Nick Gates coming over from the New York Giants again. Patricia Traina, uh, same episode. We talked to Corbin Smith of Locked On Seahawks about Cody Barton. We talked to Patricia Traina of Locked On Giants about Nick Gates, and she expects him to come in and compete for the starting center job for the Washington Commanders. So that on top of Tyler Larson. Gives the Washington Commanders a couple of centers potentially on the roster. And then, of course, we're waiting to see if Chase Roulier is able uh, to come back. Kind of in the same boat as J.D. McKissick. Not sure if he's going to be back uh, or not. Those injuries, uh, the, you know, the back-to-back season-ending injuries, obviously, are very concerning uh, for a center. And then, of course, there's some guys. John Michael Schmitz is, is just one of them. Uh, or Luke Whippler is another one out of Ohio State that come to mind in the NFL draft that potentially the Commanders could turn to. Basically, a trio of Gates, Larson, and a rookie to come in here, figure out who the best center is, the best five to put up on, on the offensive line, and go from there. And then, of course, if Chase Roulier comes back, uh, that's even better. So uh, a lot of transactions to keep up with, a lot of movement happening within the Washington Commanders roster. We're going to take time at some point, hopefully before the end of this week, kind of recollect it all, reconsolidate everything that's happening, uh, and put out kind of a projected depth chart for you uh, involving these new moves, old moves, uh, releases, trades, all of it. Uh, as we get it. So we're also going to have some insight, hopefully from uh, on Jacoby Brissett from the Locks on Browns podcast. I'm going to reach out, send them a message and see if we can't get them on to tell us what they know about Jacoby Brissett so we can get an up close and personal view of the quarterback. But today we're going to hear from Luke Braun of Locked on Vikings about new commanders, cornerback Cam Dantzler, former third round pick who's now looking for a career rebirth in Washington. And that's coming up next today on Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Joined now on the Locked On Commanders podcast by Luke Braun, host of the Locked On Vikings podcast at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter. And Luke, obviously we're here to talk about Cameron Dantzler, former Minnesota Vikings cornerback, was waived a few days prior to being claimed on Monday by the Washington Commanders. I mean, I guess right up front, I mean, third round draft pick out of Mississippi Mississippi State back in 2020. I remember a lot of good things being said about him. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. that he was my draft crush by by any means, right? But a lot of good things are being said by him. Uh, I pulled up his NFL.com draft profile from the great Lance Zerline, graded him 6.26, eventually going to be an average starter. But instead of becoming an average starter, he became a uh, waived player. So what <laughs> I mean, what happened with Cam Tansler in Minnesota? He was such a weird eval because so he I think he put on a lot of bad weight at the combine because he is a skinny, skinny, skinny guy. All of the guff you're getting about like Emmanuel Forbes right now, I think he would have gotten. But I think he put on a bunch of bad weight so that his weigh in wasn't embarrassing. He hit he hit 190 at the combine, uh, but he totally bombed all his drills through like a ran like a four, six something in the 40. Yeah. Everything else was just as bad. So it, it was like, well, is he athletic or isn't he? And then he, there was like an Instagram reel we were all going through that he posted on, from his pro day that we were frame by framing to see if that was really a four three three that he said it was. I think it landed somewhere in the middle. Um, and he's a press man corner mm. that never came along the way it always felt he could. Um, even though he's a skinny guy, he played really physical. I mean, he's insane. He'll he'll throw mm. his body in there, and that's why they call him the needle. 
uh, cause he'll poke you. <laughs> he just kind of never can. He got the starting job day one as a third round rookie, got the starting job, but he lost it later that year to Holton Hill. And then he got the starting job or he was supposed to get the starting job in 2021, lost it to Bashad Breland. This year he was, he had a starting job again, lost it to Duke Shelley in the middle of the year, um, got hurt. Then there was a weird personal issue. We don't really know a lot about that caused him to miss a whole bunch of time in the, at the back half of the year. Although I don't think that that's um, anything you guys need to worry about. So th- that's kind of the, the lowdown on him. Um, he's a press man corner and he plays with not nearly as much confidence as I think he could. I think he's better than he gives himself credit for. And I think that that is firmly the fault of Vikings coaching and of mm-hmm. now fired Vikings coaches like Mike Zimmer and so on. Um, I, I think they got in his head a little bit and now he gives too much cushion. He lets things get caught too much in front of him. He's just way too conservative to the point where it's not playing smart. It's playing scared. Um, mm-hmm. And I think a fresh start could be really good for him in an environment. Maybe if Ron Rivera can be the the guy that can sort of, um, I don't, I don't want to say coddle. That's not the word, but like a, a positive version of that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody that can nurture him maybe is a better word. Right. Kind of nurture that mentality and get the confidence he had in college back. Then I think you might, you, you would have a starting quality corner, but that's far from a guarantee. Hmm. You know, it's going to, it's going to be interesting because the Washington commanders, I mean, you look at him, right? Six, 290 pounds and, you know, not, not mirror images, but you kind of almost go immediately to Benjamin St. Juice and say, well, if he can do some of the things, same things that Benjamin St. Juice could do, then you, you kind of see the fit for the Washington commanders here. But at the same time, being in training camp, being in around during the off season program, I watched Chris Harris, the former commanders, defensive backs coach do a lot of work with Benjamin St. Juice. And I mean, I'm talking, you'll do, he would do a rep. Chris Harris would call him off to the side. Danny Johnson would come in and fill in. And you see Coach Harris coaching up Benjamin St. Juice, getting him pumped up, getting him remotivated, putting him back out on the field. Let's put these lessons to work in the moment. Let's not wait till we get to the classroom. Let's do it right here on the field. Here's where you messed up. Here's where you need to shift. Go out there and do it, and you'll, and you'll see that it works. And I think that's where a lot of that confidence came from. Coach Harris is gone, unfortunately. So I don't know mm-hmm. if, if that same type of energy, that same type of mentorship is going to be there. I think it's not going to be. Uh, just curious. Uh, to see how how that's going to go. Now you say press man corner, and again I go back go back and read his 2020 draft profiles. It says kind of the same thing. And now I'm starting to think maybe a smaller version of William Jackson. And the problem with William Jackson, and the reason that never worked out in Washington, is because press man coverage ability was there, zone coverage was not. How does Cam Dantzler do in zone coverage from what you've seen so far? He busts a lot of coverages. That's really the thing is there's a, there were a lot of miscommunications on his side of the field. Not always his fault, not always easy to tell whose fault it is, but there were enough that he was involved in where it had to be some of them. Um, that was much worse when he was younger. And again, fresh start. He was learning new defensive stuff kind of constantly. Um, and so I, I don't really fault him for a, a lot of that. And I think that there's still a world where he, maybe he can do it with just like better coaching. Um, but when it comes to like the technique and all of that, that's all very much there. Mm-hmm. He's just a little late to break on stuff sometimes. Um, but like every once in a while, he'll get into the rhythm of the game. And then suddenly he's the best corner you've ever seen. Like mm-hmm. he, he would, he would be good for like every other game. He'd have like a series or two where he just breaks up like five plays in a row. Like just suddenly plays super aggressive. Suddenly he's feeling it and you can see like, Oh, there is, that's you. That's who you can be. But he just couldn't really be that outside of a few bursts here and there. Um, so I, I really do think that it's it's a lot more in his head. I think he's got the muscle memory he's supposed to have. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of can the coaches nurture that confidence the way that he used to have it. And I and it, it shows up a lot more in man because man is more of a game of chicken and zones yeah. a lot more like cerebral. Um, but I would be worried about like in-play coverage adjustments in particular. If he's got to suddenly do an undercall, if he's got to change where he's supposed to go, um, he will be responsible for for busted coverages, and that that's something you you can't have if you're putting him on the field. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, still still a young guy, right? Doesn't turn 25 until September, so still plenty of opportunities. You know, you would think if you can show the effort and show kind of the ability to be coached and the ability to learn um, and get more confidence. In the meantime, a lot of times these these upward climb kind of guys, and early on here in the new league year. That's really kind of where Washington is going. They've signed two undrafted free agents or former undrafted free agent offensive linemen who kind of worked their way up to being starting caliber offensive linemen. Then you get a, a linebacker out of Seattle who was a third round pick 
And then when the defense was struggling, according to Corbin Smith of Lockdown Seahawks, was catching a lot of flack uh, for kind of mm. being the only. Apparently, he's the one guy out of eleven on the defense causing all the problems. Uh, but Corbin <laughs> Corbin says that's not uh, not it's not the truth uh, there. So yeah, the no, Washington Commanders no. definitely kind of having a type here as guys yeah. who either have reclamation already project proven, for sure. Yeah, who have either already proven uh, against all doubt that they could do it, or guys who have something to prove. And Cameron Dansler. Certain one of those. Any special teams ability, any gunner ability that you see out of him potentially uh, for the Washington Commanders in the early going? He did that a little bit as a rookie. Um, he was too high up the depth chart to do much of it uh, mm -hmm. after that. But I, I think he could. I don't know if I need him to. I, I yeah. think he can probably compete for a starting role. Um, but my take, and it was going to be a spicy take, was that he wasn't going to make the team in August. Because mm -hmm. the Vikings, I think, are just going to get a lot of corners and it's just going to be a crowded group by the time all things are set. They need to fill out the whole room. So I think they're just going to throw mud at the wall. But that yeah. was a, a, a spicy take. But that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I think if he is your anointed starter, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, but give him a guy to beat in a camp competition and see how it shakes out. Absolutely. And then last question, Luke, is he is he outside only? Is there is there some nickel potential yeah. in there? I would not move him into the slot. No, um, <laughs> he's he's tall, kind of skinny guy. <laughs> yeah. That's not the he doesn't have that kind of athleticism. He's not the sort of shifty cover a, a stupid little tank Dell slot receiver type guy. Yeah. That's yeah, that's not his game. Absolutely. Hey, look, second string outside corner. I mean, that's a good way to make a living for less than three mil. Yeah. Too. We'll That'll see. Uh, we'll see what Cameron Dan and look and, and Kendall Fuller is a, is, a, is a, a growing veteran. Um, that's a nice way of saying getting old. Never know what could happen. Give him a couple of years uh, under the right tutelage, like you said, and maybe Cameron Dance yeah. can reach some of that potential that he had coming out of Mississippi State uh, in the 2020 NFL Draft. Luke Braun, host of the Locked On Vikings podcast. Appreciate your time. Everybody follow him on Twitter at Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. If you like smart football, you want to follow Luke. If you like bunnies, you need to follow Luke Braun. You'll find out why once you follow <laughs> Luke Braun. Luke, appreciate your time, brother. Thanks for coming through. Cheers, man. Thanks to Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings for joining us and filling us in on everything we need to know about Cam Dantzler. Certainly some information, some interesting information uh, coming out there in that conversation. And thank all of you for making the Locked On Commanders podcast first listen or your first watch of the day. Again, I'll reach out to Locked On Browns and see if we can't get uh, some insight and information into quarterback Jacoby Brissett. In the meantime, Check out the Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes podcast from free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more. Join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL, NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to get in on the conversation, drop your thoughts in the comment box on YouTube or hit me up in email form at LockedOnWashingtonCommanders at gmail.com or in the DMs on Twitter at LOCommanders or at DHarrison82. Signing off for today, I am David Harrison, staff writer for Commander Country, credential member of the media covering your Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. And until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another. And we'll see you right back here next time for the next episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.